This is KGW News at 11. First up tonight, the search is on for an armed man who ran from police, they say, after a traffic stop in the Lentz neighborhood and people in that area have been told to stay inside as officers search for that man. KGW's Art Edwards is live in southeast Portland. So, Art, what's the latest on this? Well, the active search is still going on out here in southeast Portland. We are uh, right near the staging area for many of the police officers, right outside the Eastport Plaza on Holgate and 84th. So far, we have no information from police that they have been able to find the armed man that they have been looking for for several hours. This all started at about 7 o'clock this evening when police stopped a car at 86th and Steel here in southeast Portland. One of the men jumped out of the car and ran, according to police. An officer saw him with a gun and called for more officers into the area. The second man stayed with the car. He's been detained by police. Now, Portland police did set up a perimeter between Southeast Steel and Southeast Levy Streets and Southeast 87th and 88th Avenues. That is near Lentz Park, and there was a pickles game going on in the park at the time. The special emergency reaction team responded. The police bureau airplane has been in the air to help with the search. Police do have some advice for people who live inside the search area. If they're inside the perimeter, it's best if they stay inside their house, um, lock the doors, and if they see anything suspicious, to let us know, call 911. Uh, we have no reason to think that this person is a, an unusual threat to the neighborhood. However, we just don't know. Now, police don't have a whole lot to go on as far as the description is concerned. They say that he is described as a black man, about six feet tall, 150 pounds. At the time, he was wearing light blue jeans and red shoes. He was holding a silver gun. If you do see that person or know anything about this, you are asked to call Portland Police. Back to you. And that was a huge police response, so we appreciate the info, Art. Thank you very much. A 15-year-old boy was arrested today after police said he tried to rob someone at gunpoint in a park in broad daylight. In fact, this here is the gun they say he used. It happened around 1130 this morning in Harrison Park. That's on Southeast Stephen Street. Police say the teen walked up to someone in the park, pulled out the gun and tried to take that person's phone. They say the victim fought back and the teen ran off. No one was hurt and the boy was arrested soon after. Police aren't releasing his name because he is a minor. <laughs> Let's turn now to national news, bracing for raids. Detention centers are about to get even more crowded. The vice president visited this one in Texas yesterday. Video of his visit has been viewed millions of times online. The migrants there, in case you couldn't understand, were yelling no showers. This has tomorrow, the president pledges to deploy ICE agents across these major U.S. cities to round up more undocumented immigrants. Portland is not on the list. Cities that are include San Francisco, L.A., Chicago and New York. Tonight, the Wall Street Journal is reporting arrests have already begun in New York. And back here on the West Coast, a man was shot and killed by police outside one of those ICE detention facilities. He's now been ID'd as 69-year-old Willem Van Sponsen. This happened this morning in Tacoma. Police say he was armed and trying to set buildings and cars on fire. They also say it happened hours after a protest there. People at the protest, they say, were peaceful but angry about what's happening nationwide. More now from Amy Moreno. You say I shut down. I shut down. I shut it down. Shut it down. It was not the event they had planned for this day. Police tape kept crowds away from the Northwest Detention Center and plans to protest the ice sweeps that the Trump administration is planning for this weekend. On the opposite side of the tape down the road, Tacoma police and federal investigators tried to sort out the violence that played out here in the early morning hours. Investigators say it started with a 911 call because someone was throwing devices over the fence to try and start a fire. When police arrived, they saw a man with a rifle and said he was carrying a satchel. We don't know, um, you know, if if he just was trying to set a trap, you know, for officers, if he was trying to hurt people in the building. A car in the parking lot was torched and investigators say the suspect threw flares at a propane tank trying to make it explode. Ultimately, four officers opened fire, killing the man the area around the facility had to be blocked off. It's just too much. There's just too much. We need the public 
We need his base, everybody to know that this is happening with our tax money. With our money, they are doing this. The Lights for Liberty Immigrant Solidarity event had to be postponed, and people coming here to visit loved ones were turned away. It's frustrating for activists who say they're trying to get more people to fight for those being detained. We have to be resilient and we have to continue fighting. We're not victims. We don't want anybody to come and save us. We can do it ourselves, but we need help. That's for sure. We need support. All right, so that was Amy Moreno reporting. We talked about the Tacoma detention facility, the one where that happened last night on KGW, and that's because a Cornelius mom is being held there right now as friends and family work to fight against her deportation. Betsy Moreno has been in the country since she was one year old. We're told she was once protected under DACA, but that was revoked a couple of years ago after she got her second DUII, and a warrant at that point was put out for her arrest. ICE tells us a judge also ordered she be removed from the country in 2017 when she didn't show up for her immigration hearing. Moreno's friends say ICE agents approached her this week as she left a McDonald's with her daughter and she was arrested. And again, while these massive sweeping raids aren't taking place in Oregon, arrests do continue. In fact, we've learned of another one, this time in Eugene. Last month, ICE called a restaurant there to ask about an employee's citizenship. The restaurant couldn't verify it, so that employee, this man here, Luis Barrietos, was arrested. The owner of GJ's Family Restaurant says he's worked there for 12 years and had what looked like credible paperwork when he was hired. A longtime customer of the restaurant says Barrientos does not deserve this. I, mean, I don't know what to say. He's just an individual that if I was able to pick a brother, I'd pick him. He's just honest. He looks you in the face. So Barrientos' family and friends are working to fundraise for an immigration attorney to fight his deportation. And again, tomorrow's ice raids not expected to happen in Portland. That said, people here not staying quiet. We, of course, saw this protest wind through the streets of downtown last night. And then just hours ago, the Lentz Neighborhood Association posted this open letter on their Facebook page saying they stand in solidarity with local immigrants and refugees. This letter also says last month, a different Lentz neighborhood group invited ICE to its neighborhood meeting. Tonight, the Lentz Neighborhood Association says ICE is not welcome at those meetings. All right, let's shift gears here and head now to the Gulf Coast where Tropical Storm Barry continues to slowly move inland. It's dumping heavy rain across the region, threatening communities from Florida through Alabama. And this levee right here breached in Louisiana, but others are holding steady, at least for now. In low-lying areas, trees and power lines are down and roads have turned into rivers. We saw that video at the top of the show. People have been told to evacuate, but some are staying put. We elected to stay, and we know there was a possibility of losing all our uh, utilities. I have uh, four dogs and one cat, which is very hard to leave. So even though the rain is the biggest problem, the storm was a hurricane when it made landfall, meaning it also brought with it strong winds that ripped off roof shingles, as well as a huge storm surge. So let's bring in meteorologist Joe Ranieri now. You're tracking Barry in the Weather Center, Joe. So what's standing out to you at this point? Well, like you said, it's the rain, and it's a slow-moving system. So we're going to be seeing onslaught of rain over the next uh, several days. So here's a look where it's currently at. It really hasn't moved over the last several hours. Like you said, Maggie, when it made landfall, it was a category one hurricane. Now it's a tropical storm. We'll be turning into a tropical depression really overnight by seven o'clock central standard time. Wind speeds will be at 40 miles per hour. Once it gets down to below 39 miles per hour, it will be considered a tropical depression. That will happen sometime late tomorrow morning. But as we look at the rainfall amounts, now this is model has been going back and forth. Regardless, it's going to be pretty nasty in terms of the wind and the rain and the flooding over the next few days or so. But uh, this system is going to go space basically straight north, impacting folks, of course, throughout parts of Louisiana and Little Rock and Memphis by the uh, later part of next week. We'll be looking at anywhere from 
four, maybe six inches of rain. And here's the latest on model and where it's going to go. It's going to go north up through parts of Arkansas, then kind of hang east a little bit, kind of impacting the remnants of it through parts of the east coast. And that's not going to happen until the middle part of next week. So made landfall this morning as a category one hurricane, the first hurricane of the Atlantic season. Slow moving storm, major flooding, still a concern and flood warnings across the Gulf states. The other thing I was telling you about that could spark over the next couple of days is some severe thunderstorms and some tornadoes and we're seeing evidence of that. There's a tornado warning uh, just uh, east of Jackson, Mississippi. So uh, you might be thinking, hey, the storm has made landfall. Well, still going to be dealing with a lot of rain and severe weather over the next two to three days. I'll talk more about the local forecast in about 10 minutes. Maggie, back to you. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Great info there.